Here's a family tree of groups or sects within the Islamic tradition. Don't worry about the complexity here. We're going to focus on, first of all, the big split between Sunnis and Shias. There's the Sunni majority. Most Muslims are Sunnis. And then there's the Shia group. These are the ones who thought that Ali should be the successor to Muhammad. Out of the Shia groups, we'll talk about the two biggest ones in the present day, the Twelvers and the Seveners. And in the last segment of this lecture, we'll briefly discuss Sufism, a spiritual movement that actually transcends all these boundaries. About these divisions, most Muslims do consider all the main groups as being truly Islamic, and they hold that the differences don't take away the fact that they are all in one Ummah, they're all adherents of Islam. And they even regard the different Islamic groups as making different contributions to the overall development of Islam. However, there are pockets of more sectarian attitudes, and historically there's been plenty of hate between the Sunni and Shia, as we'll see. Let's talk first then about the Sunni majority. Sunni Muslims currently are at least 85% of Muslims in the world. You could also call this majority Islam or just mainstream Islam, or you could call it orthodox Islam. Their authority is consensus of the majority in the Ummah. They believe that Muhammad and his immediate successors were divinely guided, and they believe that God now guides the community as a whole. And this doesn't hold in all cases, as we'll see, but generally speaking, they're fairly lenient towards specifics of belief and practice and sort of broad-minded. That is, it's a kind of big tent group. As long as you don't renounce Islam, as long as you accept the oneness of God and the prophethood of Muhammad, generally speaking, they're going to consider you a true Muslim. This, even though your practice and belief may be a bit lax or non-standard. However, a very famous and influential subgroup within Sunni takes a more rigorous view. This is the Wahhabi, or the Wahhabiya movement. Now, the term Wahhabi was originally an outsider's name. What they called themselves was the Muwahidun, which means defenders of unity, that is, defenders of the uniqueness and oneness of God. However, they now accept the name Wahhabi. They were founded by a man named Al-Wahhab, who died in 1792. This is in Saudi Arabia. For him, the only authorities were the Quran and the Hadith. It's the traditions of Muhammad and his companions, as recorded in the memories of the Hadith, that are authoritative. And he opposed any kind of innovation. An innovation is some new practice that's been introduced, and in their view, it's the kind of thing that distracts from God. These included a lot of practices that had arisen in the Sunni world and also in the Shia world. Things like the use of rosaries to count one's prayers, elaborate decorations in mosques, allegorical or esoteric interpretations of the Quran, smoking, praying to saints or to angels, and the veneration of tombs of saints. These practices they consider to be outright idolatry or at least something close to it, something that distracts from God. At various times, Wahhabis have actually destroyed shrines at the birthplace of Muhammad and the tombs of his companions. Though interestingly, they have kept an expanded Muhammad's tomb shrine in Medina, They've also been big opponents of Sufism. And not only the Sufis, but any kind of non-standard belief and practice they really crack down on. You could say they're very sectarian. They're willing to declare other beliefs and practices not truly Muslim, especially the Shia. They're inclined to think that they're worse than unbelievers. They also enforced mandatory public prayer attendance. They taught predestination. And allied with the Saud family, they militarily took over and unified Saudi Arabia throughout the course of the 19th century. The process culminated in 1920 to 1925. The Wahhabi have not been large in numbers, but they've been large in influence. In modern times, they completely control Mecca and its shrine, and so they hold a central place in the Islamic world. They've successfully promoted their own conservative and traditional understanding of Islam worldwide by funding schools, for instance, and they've influenced other branches of Islam, especially since World War II, enjoying their enormous oil wealth. The Saudi ruling family has governed in what's been described as a pragmatic style. Although still conservative and Wahhabi, they've tended to go with what works, even if they had to step on some toes and depart from some tradition. Because of this, the more zealous came to regard the ruling family of Saudi Arabia as corrupt, as gluttonous, as degenerates, and this famously included the radical Osama bin Laden. He was a radical Saudi Wahhabi who had clashed with the ruling Saudi regime, whom he regarded as unbelievers. 
The famous terrorist organization Al-Qaeda was formed by him and others in 1991 during the first Gulf War. He and many Wahhabis were very offended by the presence of unbelievers and their military in such a holy land as contains the shrines. Again, though, in the world, most Sunnis are not Wahhabis, but it's an important group to know about because of their location and influence. In our next segment, the Shia.